Hey everybody, this is Lieutenant Mia here, and um, I just finished up my last day, I think, of formal in-processing, so I figured I'd make this video to sort of share some information about what to expect when you guys move here. Um, I'm going to try to cover everything I went through recently in this video, but if I forget something or if there's something I didn't cover and you guys have a question on it, let me know and I can answer it in the comments section. Um, but this is going to sort of walk you through sort of what to expect when you get here. Um, some tips and tricks that I've learned. I've only been here two weeks, but even in that short period of time, you kind of learn some do's and don'ts about the base and just some general things that other LTs have figured out that for some reason <laughs> they leave you to figure out on your own. Um, so I'll talk about sort of the path I took to get here myself. Um, I went the Diddy move route, aka do it yourself move. Um, so I just loaded up my car and I put all my stuff in my car and I just moved it that way. I didn't get a U-Haul or a hire a mover or anything. So if you decide to go that route, a couple of pieces of advice for you would be um, one, to save all of your receipts. I would dedicate like an envelope in your glove box and save all your gas receipts and save all of your um, way tickets uh, for your car and don't lose them because if you lose them, you can't get reimbursed. So just keep them in a safe place. The second thing is weighing your vehicle when you take it to get weighed. I would try to find a way station on the way to Pensacola um, for your first way because the way station that's closest to here, they don't have one on base. So you have to drive about 30 minutes out and it kind of sucks. Um, so that way, if you weigh it on the way up, if you just find one that's on the road or off the road, you'll save yourself a trip and that's kind of nice. Um, you'll obviously have to go to the way station that's here to weigh your vehicle unloaded, but again, it saves you from having to drive there twice. Um, so save your receipts and weigh your car on the way if you can. Uh, second thing is sort of uh, what to expect when you get to the base. Um, and that's sort of to make preparations. I'm not sure if your detachment briefed you on this or not, but mine didn't and I kind of had to figure it out. Um, I would say if you know what date you're coming here already, if your EAD is like semi-locked in, or actually if your EAD is locked in, I would call one of two hotels on the base. You've got Navy Gateway in and the other is the Navy Lodge. Those are the two hotels that you can stay at on base that will reimburse you um, for your stay. Other, those, other than those two, I don't think you can get reimbursed at any other place. And the only way to do it is if those two um, hotels are filled to capacity, um, in which case they'll make an exception and there's a process for that. But I would call the hotels and let them know what day you're getting here and book it for at least, in my opinion, at least like four to five days because you just don't know when you'll get assigned housing. Like for me, for example, it took them four days before I got assigned a place and luckily I made reservations for four nights at the hotel to you know keep me at bay until that was figured out but you know it's kind of up in the air as to how long it takes before they stick you in a dorm here um, or if you're living off base before they figure that out so it's just better safe than sorry if, if I'm not mistaken now don't quote me on this but from my general understanding I think the Air Force will reimburse you up to 10 days so you might as well just give them the worst case scenario and say hey I need a place to stay for maybe five, six, seven days. Um, again, I would call the hotel and I would call TMO and the transportation office and the reimbursement process just to double check that you will be reimbursed for however many days you reserve, but I believe it is 10 days. So that's uh, ticket number two. A little piece of advice with that, if you can secure Navy Lodge as your hotel, if you need a hotel, Navy Lodge is way nicer than Navy Gateway Inn. Luckily, that's the hotel I got put in and it's super sweet, it's right by the water, it's uh, secluded, it's right across the Naval Air Museum, which is super cool. Um, if you have time to go check that out, definitely do. Um, Navy Lodge is the better of the two. Conversely, it's also um, more packed, like more people like going there, so it's harder to find a room. So if they are booked, don't be surprised. So that takes care of lodging, and I'll kind of move into what to expect when you get here. So for those of you, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys were briefed this or not. I'm just going to say it anyway, because no one briefed me until like the day before I got here. Um, if you look on your orders, you'll see a um, an NLT date a rep or a RNLT, report no later than date. That's the date you have to go to the um, student squadron, report in and get your paperwork started. Um, generally, depending on where you're coming from, that's a day or maybe two days after your um, EAD date. For me, since I live in Florida, I live. I was trans. Uh, what's the word? I was commuting from Tampa to Pensacola. They gave me one day. Um, so my EAD date was the eighth, and my report no later than than date was the ninth. So they gave me a day to get up here. Uh, again, depends on where you're coming from. <clears throat> so, you know. 
make accommodations for that, whatever. So when you get to the base, the first thing you'll do um, is report to uh, Stus, S-T-U-S. -S um, it's not called StuCon anymore. It used to be called that. Now it's just called Stus, Student Squadron. Um, you'll report there in blues, and um, it's nothing like formal reporting in, like an ROTC or OTS. You literally just show up and you go to a desk and they give you a folder. Um, and the folder has a bunch of stuff you need to take care of. It's called um, reporting and checklist. And expect all those checkboxes to be filed over the course of uh, a week or two. You're not going to knock it all out in one day. Um, and that's kind of sort of where like the scavenger hunt of in processing happens. You'll get your uh, packet full of stuff. Uh, and you'll need to basically drive all around the base and take care of a bunch of paperwork in different buildings. Um, a few things on the checklist you can do at home. There's a couple of accounts you need to set up, your travel profile, uh, government travel card. You'll need to uh, register an appointment to get your, uh, your CAC. Those kinds of things you can take care of at home, but a lot of the stuff you're going to have to do just driving around the base. And um, yeah, just get used to a lot of, a lot of repetitive driving. There's a few buildings that you'll go to. Somebody who needs to sign a paper isn't there, so you got to leave and come back. So it's a lot of that. The past two weeks have basically been nonstop um, driving around short trips like that. Um, and you'll basically start your in-processing with that packet. Um, now, every Wednesday is when you have your formal briefs to knock out a good chunk of that in-processing, but it's only on Wednesdays that you can do that. So say, for example, you got here on a Thursday or a Friday, you're pretty much going to have to wait until that next Wednesday before you can knock out a lot of the stuff in the in-processing checklist. Um, that includes meeting the uh, meeting with finance. Um, you're going to get a couple of briefs, like safety briefs, uh, your security badge, things like that to basically uh, complete your, your profile and the, so that the base can acquire you if basically uh, into their system and they can look you up on their computer records. So uh, I would recommend if you have a few days to kill up until that Wednesday, knock out as much stuff as you can on that in-processing checklist. Um, but until then, if, you, if you've knocked out stuff and you don't have anything else to do, enjoy your casual time. You, you'll probably be on casual status for a few days. I was uh, for five days and I didn't get to do anything. I mean, I didn't have anything to do, so I just explored the base, drove around town. Um, and uh, as far as the town goes, it's uh, the immediate area surrounding the base is a little sketchy, but the base itself is super nice. Um, oh, about that. So this is, as you know, it's Naval Air Station. So it's a predominantly uh, Navy occupied facility. And because of that, I, I, I kind of found to find out this the hard way. The cops here, they're all Navy cops and they hate Air Force. Um, they'll ticket you at any chance. R rolling stops at a stop sign, speeding like three miles, five miles over the speed limit, they'll get you for. So like, don't even try it. Literally stick to the speed limit and set cruise control if you have to. Just don't go a mile over just to be safe because they hate us. If you have any Air Force stickers on your car or they see you wearing an Air Force uniform, they're looking out for you for some reason. It's weird. It's just how it is. Um, and it's something that the um, I've heard from a lot of Air Force here that, you know, that's what happens. Um, so then in processing after that, if you are single, most likely you'll be put in a dorm the dorms here have to be filled to, I believe, like 90% capacity or something like that before they'll let you find a place on your own. Um, so if you are living in a uh, living by yourself, you'll be put in a dorm. And it sounds like you know that's a bad thing, but honestly, it's it's not so much a dorm; it's a single bedroom apartment. Um, I'm actually here right now, and uh, I was gonna make a video of the dorm, like a little tour to show you guys what it looks like, um, but it's kind of messy in here, so I wanted to tidy up before I did that. Uh, it, it comes with all the amenities you'll need though. It has a washer dryer, um, microwave slash convection oven. It's like a small unit. I'll make it, you'll see it in the video and you'll see what I mean. Um, it's got a dishwasher. It's loaded with furniture. Like honestly, in my opinion, it has too much furniture. Like there's literally no room to put any of the stuff that I brought up. So if you're worried about, oh, what do I have to bring? You honestly don't have to bring anything. It comes with a couch, a recliner, a TV stand, a queen size bed, uh, all the fixtures you need. Um, maybe they might not be to your taste and to your like liking or comfort, but it's here. It's just one less thing you have to pack. And honestly, you'll be here for like, what, not too long. So maybe it's better that way. Um, so yeah, I'll do a video of the dorm tour tomorrow. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else to cover that I haven't talked about yet. 
uh, IFT and SEER. So me and a couple of the, the people that I came up with got lucky with our, our SEER dates and IFT dates. Like I leave for IFT next Tuesday and I'll be gone for a month. Uh, immediately followed by SEER a week after that. So me and the other people that I in process with are just back to back crunching, you know, time crunch to, to get out of here. So a lot of this has been hectic getting all the processing stuff checked out. But conversely, I've also come across people who have been here on casual status from eight to 10 months, just sitting, doing nothing. Well, not doing nothing. They'll give you what's called a stash job where you know you're a lieutenant the air force is paying you but they don't have you assigned to do anything yet so they just pretty much stick you where they need you and some of the jobs are not glamorous there's um there's what's called ua duty urine analysis where you basically watch people pee it's like a drug test lab you could get stuck doing that um there is um security detail where you'll pretty much sit at a desk and check people in um and then there's also volunteer events that you'll be voluntold to do if no one else steps up to do it. So there's plenty to keep you busy once you've gotten past the initial casual status time. Like me, my first week or so, I didn't have any assignments. And then this past week, I got assigned to do graduation assistance, little things like that here and there. So if you have time to kill, they'll probably put you somewhere to go. Um, there's a lot more to talk about, but I feel like I'm rambling. I don't want to keep going if this video is getting too long. But there's a few things I could talk about, taking leave, uh, weekend passes, uh, things like that. I'll, you know, I'll go in more into detail if you guys have questions about it or any more things I didn't touch on. But I think that's about to wrap it up. You know, I'll touch on that real quick. The general, vicinity, the general thing is um, on weekends, you can't travel more than three hours, a three hour radius of the base um, without, no, actually that's it. You can't travel more than three hours on weekends outside of the base and then on duty days days uh, Monday through Fridays you can't travel more than one hour um, from the base so that's the general gist you know taking leave and going out that's another thing but that's the general rule and I'm pretty sure that's across the board no matter where you go with the Air Force could be wrong I don't know um, so hopefully this video has been informative um, I'll do the dorm tour tomorrow maybe the day after um, but yeah that that's everything that I can think of that came to my mind. Again, if you have questions about any of this, if there's anything I can, you know, help with before you guys show up, just let me know. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see more of you guys in processing soon so I won't be the baby anymore. But take care.